Hey everybody, Sean Powers here, and today we're going to finish off section 1.6 of the Linux Plus Objectives, talking about snaps and flat packs and app images. Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, but whether or not you want to take the exam or you just want to learn more about Linux, the Linux Plus Objectives are a great set of things that will help you become a better system administrator. Before we do that, though, I realize that I have been forgetting to put my Patreon supporters in my videos, and that's literally one of the perks in one of the of the tiers of being a Patreon supporter. And I'm so sorry. It's such a douchebag move. I hope you believe that it wasn't on purpose. I literally just keep forgetting. They should be scrolling either in the bottom or the sides. I'm going to do that in post edit. So I don't know where they're going to be, but they're awesome. And I'm so, so grateful. Now, as they all scroll by and they're, everybody that supports me is awesome. Um, I want to specifically call out a uh, new nerdy nerdling who nerds, which is not an insult. That's actually the name of one of the tiers. And that is Santiago Carnago, whose name I probably pronounced wrong. I'm not good at rolling my R's. Car Carnago? I don't know. I'm so sorry. I should have just stopped. Um, also, there are two new bean class tier supporters from Patreon, and that's like the highest tier. I It just blows me away. So thank you so much to Eric Santos and to Mike Sarah. Sarah, I probably pronounced your name wrong too. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Um, but Thank you both so much. Uh, I, I just can't explain how awesome it is that you have chosen to support me, even when I do a bad job of remembering to put everybody's name and give you recognition. Uh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, like I said, this finishes up section 1.6 of the Linux Plus objectives. I'm calling it section 1.6.2, and we're going to look at the various sandboxed apps and the ways you can install them on Linux. It's different from package management. These are more like like Docker and your desktop GUI had an illegitimate baby. I have mixed emotions about sandboxed apps, but we're gonna go over the most common way that they are installed on systems. So I'm here on Rocky Linux and Rocky Linux has Flatpak installed. It's a Flatpak is what Red Hat uses for their sandbox applications. And there's a little bit of a weird nuance here though, because by default, there aren't any repos installed for Flatpak. So basically if we tried to install something with Flatpak, it'd be like, eh, I don't, I don't have any information. There's no repos. What I recommend is you go to flathub.org at first, and then you'll see all these wonderful little applications here. Now you can go to like Krita, which is a great, graphics program. And if you wanted to install it, if you scroll down, it says like, here's the way to do it on the command line. Okay. But this doesn't exactly work. Let me show you. So we copy this, right? This, this is the install information. And if we were to paste this on the command line, uh, basically it says flat pack install as a command. The next field flat hub is what repo to install it from. And then the name of the package. But if we do this, it's going to say that's great, but I have no idea what flat hub is because like I said, it doesn't have the repo installed. Now there are commands to install repos separately. And we could go back over here and find the instructions for installing. It says, this is how you can install like here's Rocky Linux. So click on here and it's a install flat pack. Flat pack was itself was already installed. And then you need to install the repo uh, doing this. So we could install the remote, which is what they call repos. But there's kind of a neat shortcut you can do because if I close this, even though we haven't set up the repo, if we go up to the top and we click this install button, it's going to download a file right there. This uh, org.kde.krita.flatpackref. Okay, so that file is now downloaded on our system in the downloads folder. So if we do ls downloads, we're going to see there's that file. Now, if we install that file, it does a cool thing. So let's, let's do that. We're going to say flat pack install downloads that file. And the very first thing it does, it says, hey, the remote or the repo, I'm going to call repos remotes is at this location and it contains additional applications. Should the remote be kept for future installations? So what it's gonna do, it's going to install the repo for us. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna press enter for yes. And now uh, here's the thing too, flat packs are installed system wide. So everybody's going to be able to use the application. Now, Flatpak does have a dash dash user flag that you may be able to install things only for the local user, but in general, it's going to be a system wide install. If you do things locally for the user, sometimes you still have to use the sudo privilege in order to do that. It's a little bit weird to install some stuff, some places, some stuff, other places. Just know that by default and by design, flat packs are installed system wide. So that's what we're going to do. So we enter our sudo password. 
and it's going to do that. It says that the required runtime also has like, or the, the thing also has other dependencies. Okay. The, the runtime files, should I install that as well? Well, yes, of course you should. So again, the default is yes. I'm going to say yes. And it's going to install all of these things, which are dependencies and the Krita program in the sandboxed flat pack format itself. So I'm just going to say yes, install, and it's going to download all of those files. Now, the thing about sandbox applications is it handles all of the dependencies internally. So if there's two programs that conflict with each other, that's okay because everything is inside its own flat pack. This is this the idea behind these sandboxed applications is that a developer can release one time for all the platforms. So it like doesn't matter if there's a different version of dependencies installed on the system because each flat pack will download and install its own internal dependencies. And so that's the advantage. It's supposedly going to be easier for a developer to like release once for every package and uh, flat packs are supposed to be distribution agnostic. They'll just always work. The thing about sandboxed apps is they are a little bigger because again, they install all, each one installs all their own dependencies, kind of like Docker installs all of its dependencies when you're running a container and they start a little slower because since they have their own dependencies, those dependencies are not already in memory from another program that's running. And they also can use a little bit more memory because again, it's not sharing with other applications. All of the stuff is self-contained. Now computers are fast enough with enough like resources that it's not generally an issue, uh, but know that that is the case. And they do start up a little bit slower as they load everything in a memory. So once it's downloaded and installed, now if we go back here, it says that you can actually run it by saying flat pack run and that, and if we paste that in, it's going to actually run that program. Now, the thing is though, usually it's going to also install it into the system menu. So if we go activities here, we can type uh, Krita and it's going to be installed in the menu just like a regular application is. Okay, so we can, we can start it just by clicking on that. We don't have to use the command line to start them or to start it. So, you know, that's kind of nice. Okay, let's start it back over here. And so this is Krita running as a flat pack app. Now the main competitor, if you want to call it a competitor for an open source framework for installing applications is going to be snaps or maybe they're snap packs. I'm not really sure. I think they're just called snaps and it's the exact same kind of idea. This is something though that Ubuntu uses and Ubuntu, I'm, they're not exclusive, but it's mainly Ubuntu that uses snaps and it's the same sandboxed idea. They download all of their things. They're generally system wide. It will store configuration files in your home folder under a snaps folder, but the actual snaps themselves are stored in a system wide snaps directory. Anyway, it functions pretty much the same way, but there are a few caveats because Ubuntu is really pushing for people to use snaps. Now on an Ubuntu system, snaps are installed by default. So you don't have to worry about like setting up a repository because they are already installed when you install the system. Ubuntu is pushing snaps really, really hard. In fact, we could do uh, snap, I think it's info. Is it info or list? Uh, no, snap list. And this will show you all of the snaps that are installed on the system. Again, they're system wide, so they're installed on the system. And it looks like, uh, yeah, Firefox actually up here. I didn't install Firefox. When the system was installed, Firefox came pre-installed and they use snaps instead of apt. And that's what I mean by they're pushing it really hard. That's what they want you to use. Now we could install snaps using something like the software boutique, which is uh, the Ubuntu Mate version of the like software finder thing. Uh, but you can also do the command line stuff. So like we could do snap uh, search for, oh, and also flat pack. After you install a repo, if you do flat pack search, you can search for individual packages. You can test that on your own. But Snap works the same way. So Snap, uh, let's search for Chromium maybe. Oh, it looks like there's some things. Yeah, Chromium is up there. Uh, we could do Snap, install Chromium, press enter. It's going to ask us for our password because again, this is done system-wide. Even though the, the configuration files are stored in your uh, local folder, the actual Snaps are installed system-wide. So I'm gonna 
put in my password. It's going to download it and install it. Again, it's it's just like the Flatpak thing, right? It's going to install it as a sandboxed application. So it has some of the downsides where it starts a little slower, use a little more RAM, not really that big of a deal. The big selling point, right, is that, oh, now uh, developers like Chromium or Firefox only have to release one release. They can just do snaps and then it works on every distribution. But you see the problem there, right? First, there's multiple competing one install to do it all for different distributions. So now rather than making it easier for developers, developers now have to like make a snap and they have to make a flat pack and they have to maintain the app repositories and they have to maintain the RPM repositories. Will there eventually be like this synergistic moment where everything is done with sandboxed apps? I don't know, but we are not there and it is not easier for developers right now. And it's sometimes the snap or flat pack version is newer than the one in the app or RPM repository. Sometimes it's older. Usually the containerized or I'm sorry, the sandboxed apps work really well. Sometimes they don't. For example, the OBS snap, which I installed on Debian, trying to get OBS to work like what we're doing right now, that snap, or did I use, no, it was a flat pack. So it, I installed the flat pack on Debian. It just wouldn't work right. It would start, but then it would crash when it was trying to access the GPU. So it's not perfect. Um, and again, it's just like, now one more thing, it hasn't gotten easier. I'm not sold that they're the wave of the future, but maybe they are, and maybe it's just gonna be a little further into the future than I'd like. But as you can tell, Ubuntu is all in with Snap. So if we go up here to the menu, internet, now Chromium is installed in the menu, just like if we installed it with apt. So they really are all in, and Snaps are the way of the future. In fact, they are even starting to use Snap to install non-GUI tools. Like if you install a daemon, like if we went over here and we did Snap, list, you'll see there's like the, uh, well, the snap daemon, but like cups, the cups daemon for printing is now a snap, but it still uses system D to do like it's restarting, but there are snap ways to do it too. You can like snap restart a service. It's, I don't know, like, again, I'm not necessarily sold, but anyway, that's how they work. They do have the advantage that they don't conflict and they could, in theory, make things easier for developers to just release exactly how it'll work in an environment that they know it will work in, kind of like Docker has done for a lot of server-based applications. There is one more way of doing like standalone apps. And this one, I guess it's a sandboxed app too. It's all in one, and I literally mean that. It's one file. You download the file, you schmod it to executable, and you run the file. And that's called an app image. Now, app images, there's no repositories, there's no install from the command line. You literally download a file and shmod plus X to make it executable and execute that file. And I do that actually, I really like app images because they are simple and they don't have like an underlying system going on. So let me show you, like I uh, right now use app image for AVI Demux. It's a graphic or it's a video program that I use a lot. Actually, we can probably do it on this virtual machine here. Let's go to, let's look for AVI Demux. AVI Demux download. And see how right here it says it's gonna download this app image, but there's nothing to install. Once we have it, you, you just make it executable. So, okay, it's downloaded. Now, if we look in our downloads folder, we have that file. So all we do is schmod plus X. We don't have to be root to do this, make it executable, and then we just execute it. Boom, it starts right up, it works. Uh, and again, I, I like it because uh, it does have the feature where it can update itself. Like as it starts, it it doesn't always, but it can check for an updated version of itself and prompt you if you want to download the new version, which is cool. Uh, so this is the other way to go about doing it. And I like this one, again, it doesn't require any root privilege. Uh, again, it just runs on the command line as the user, but I have had an issue, let me show you. So this is actually my computer that we're recording on right now. This is Big Tuna. And there, I just downloaded the Restream, which is one of the things I use for my live stream. There's a chat program that they distribute as an app image. So if we do start app star, you'll see, uh, what's, I'll just show you what's in here. Let's see, it's called, um, oh, Restream plus chat dot app image. Oh, it's capital A, that's why I didn't find it. Uh, we just do a schmod 
plus X of the restream chat. I try to execute it and it's going to give me an error. And there's not much I can do, right? It gives me an error about something about my compositor. Yeah, I don't even know what it's complaining about, but it, it just doesn't work, but it's a single file. There's not a whole lot I can do. And so there are some downsides of app images. They aren't necessarily tested on every system to see if they will work. But uh, if I had my druthers, I would probably use an app image, uh, but flat packs and snaps are popular. People use them. People like them. I like the idea that they're sandboxed and they're their own contained thing, but personally, I get more frustrated with them than anything. And I tend to just use apt or yum or DNF to install packages from the traditional repositories. Maybe that's because I'm old, uh, but uh, that's just pretty much how I do it. So if you, if you log into a system though, you may not know whether they're snaps or flat packs or app images or installed traditionally, unless you look on the system to see what sort of stuff is installed and how. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I encourage you to play with all the systems. It's it's good to know how they work, um, but uh, know that Red Hat is generally a flat pack thing. Even though you can install flat packs on Ubuntu, you just have to get it all set up, and vice versa. You can install snap. I think you can install install snaps elsewhere. I don't ever see anybody want to install snaps anywhere else. Uh, generally, it's people wanting to use flat packs on Ubuntu. But anyway, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly be kind and play with these app things. They're fun, if nothing else. And since they're sandboxed, it's not like you're going to mess anything up on your system when you try them out. I'll see you next time.